Files. Press start to begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Super Bonus Round. We are back with more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I'm your host, John Mugiwara Jam. Joined as always by my co host, Chad Peanut. Hey! And Rich Wayne, which is 767. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're just making my job harder, aren't you? Don't an- no, I know don't answer that. I know what your answer is. Yes. <laughs> We're finally here. Yes. <laughs> Stop. Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor? Episodes are gonna come out slower because of you. <laughs> yes. Beats me. That means that took almost 30 minutes by taxi and traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only ever been to criminal affairs next door. Hmm? Hold on, what's that? <coughs> That's disturbing. <laughs> Why does it undulate like this? Oh, wait, I know. This is the blue badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, well, Mr. Wright, you still know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the blue badger. Who sat next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the blue badger. Uh oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast! Hey, pal! What are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? Um, well... Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey! I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal! And you were worried he was the victim. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You better not agree- better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. But why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. Yeah, well, so did Edgeworth, and how'd that work out for us? She says she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But, but what is she not telling the truth? Yes, well, no! Come on, pal, there's plenty of evidence against her. But, but why have thought the evidence was fake? Hey, pal, I can't speak to you for a second. Huh? Me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. She's on this guy's sister. Whoa! The chief prosecutor's little sister? Calm down, gumshoe. Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way. You might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like fate. Eh? Huh? It's just a sensitive issue with us these days. So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, not, but nothing really. They kicked me out of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe, what did you do this time? What do you mean this time? Then, what happened? I know she ain't so busy right now. Well, you see, uh, you see, pal, I, I brought Missile to another hot dog stand and, uh, <laughs> so much blood. <laughs> I mean, my sister's case and all. It's true. We've never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are being let in the criminal affairs now. The lowest ranked guy. In there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. In at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? 
So anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the badger, getting the badger dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. That sounds suspicious as fuck. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall? Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of of a crime scene. It's unheard of, pal! Hmm. Alright, so, uh... Can you say anything to him? Yeah, that's what I'm looking up. Uh... The ID badge? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. Uh, Detective Gumshoe? What can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey, pal! This is a detective's ID card! Can't just keep that! You have to turn it into the police! It's people like you that get me in so much trouble all the time! Meaning Detective Gumshoe might drop this card a lot. <laughs> hmm, let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman. Sounds familiar. Nah, my mistake. But didn't you work together with him in crime affairs? Whoa! Now I remember! Bruce Goodman! He's the victim! No! That's what I thought. Can you a small detective come through? Oh. Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Miss Edgeworth got yesterday! Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal! I got an award for diligence myself! Ah, congratulations. I was wondering why it's just... It's... Why is that award a seal? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason! Um, tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. But I was proud of Miss Edgeworth for winning that award. Even with all the naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Naysayers? Must be because of the rumors. Okay, what else? So this ID card belonged to the victim? He was a detective, like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm. Don't you think it's strange? I mean, why was a victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. There was an evidence transferral case Evidence transferral for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transfer? Yes, we missed that too. But Detective Gibbon was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but word is that Chief Prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot. And Lana's confessing as much. Wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece! Yeah, that is good. You made this Detective Gumshoe? The Chief threw together some designs and I just did my thing, pal. Nice work. It's battery powered, so it can go anywhere. There's no switch, so it just dances, dances, until the batteries die. That's a horrifying thought. <laughs> Poor Blue Badger. Fate faded to death until he drops. It's a like Swerve's <laughs> McKenzie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor Blue Badger. <laughs> faded to death until he drops. Yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a critique of capitalism right there. But Japan doesn't have a capitalist society. Uh, 
Um... It could still be a criticism of their intense work ethic. Work till you die. Very, very true. Very true. Feed the machine, then drop. Yeah. I'll present the blue badger panel. As a detective, I keep my mouth shut on that one. I know better than to go blabbing on about things I don't know about. But you just signed it. No, I wouldn't want to do that either. Good. I maybe got to examine it. Oh, we did that already. I did? We were supposed to get a letter of introduction from him. That's why I haven't left yet. What about the knife? Down in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stab with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I, I, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course, someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um... Someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, what could have happened? You have to find out a little more about what's going on with Mr. Edgeworth. He's in a tough spot again. Again? Uh, how did you forget already, Phoenix? Well, it all started with the murder of that defense attorney, Hammond. But Mr. Edgeworth is found innocent. Listen, pal, there have always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were, uh, there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They're practically shouting. But, but there's no evidence against him. Yeah, but now there's evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher-ups. Because of Von Karma. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. And when there's suspicion, that means that internal affairs get involved. <laughs> Remember when something smells, it's usually the butts. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case started near River. People say that the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? But I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this all for us. For all of us. And that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? You met the guy who is... What was his name? The guy in the parking lot? That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Officer Marshall. Is he some kind of Wild West Sheriff or something? No. Jake Marshall's just a regular officer. From West L.A. Nah, fuck you. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal. Let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this, and they'll let you examine the crime scene. Maybe. What's with the crossed out writing? And it says $20. <laughs> <laughs> the see from Vector Gumption allows the bear to investigate the crime scene. I'll be surprised if this gets us anywhere. I'll give you $20 to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Just act like you're supposed to be there, and nobody will look at you twice, pal. It's a pair of, it's a bunch of rolled up 20s, uh, uh, or a folded door origami to make an origami middle finger. Up. Uh, or you can take, or you can take down. Ron, or you can hand out, uh, Ron Swanson's, uh, uh, passport. Don't worry, I have, <laughs> don't worry, I have a permit, or don't worry, I have a permit. I can do anything I want. Yeah, the, the permit's just a piece of paper that says I can do whatever I want. <laughs> 
Looks like the investigation's still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. So it looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sub. That sleeps. might be Jake. That might be Marshall. So I'm going to go chat that one. Sorry, looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. I'll see you in my dreams tonight, then, baby. All right. Oh, no. still here? What the hell? Uh, uh, hello. Why the surprise looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in Criminal Affairs too. He also could have been an unnamed character. Robert the security guard! Oh, no, okay, I was wrong. Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a dog that's lost its herd. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. Ah, oh, god damn it! They, when he shows up on screen, they play the play. They play a song that fucking sounds like a Wild West. Would you mind reading this for me? Well, it's this. I warn you, fan letters. Fan letters to me go right in the spittoon. The letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. Maybe investigate. Gumshoe. Ah, that old cow dog. Hmm. You holding a birthday party or something? Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction, it says invitation. God damn it, Gumshoe! Uh, I think he just miswrote it. Wait, why am I not getting all defensive here? No worries, this proves it's from Detective Gumshoe. Better than a blood test. It's not a blood test, it's an idiot test. Yes, I better let you in then. Thank you, Officer Marshall. Oh, that's right. He's a patrolman, not a detective. Which reminds me. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective for hire? Well, folks. The clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hoot nanny. Jesus Christ, this is gonna kill me. Hold down, hoot nanny. Hold down, hoot nanny. <laughs> Notice, chef. Police investigations are like settling land. Uh, that doesn't go down well. Where, well, Mister White? What do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. Detective Gumshoe's letter of introduction crumpled and discarded. But why did it say twenty dollars? It I swear it said twenty dollars. <laughs> oh, we just start talking to him, I guess. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Stillman, you're a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a faster dog in there now? I swear to God. Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 5.15. Smile Madonna told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Star. One stab to the chest, a fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy report. Death due to the loss of blood, one knife wound, died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Wait, was what? Huh? Was okay. Th they said he died at 5:15. The dot. You guys picked up on that, right? Yep, I did. So they he said was... he was killed at 5:15, so but the autopsy doesn't say that. Says he was. So that means he was stabbed at 4 p.m. It even says so right here. Re remember this tomorrow. All right, Austin, you may continue. But is involved with the victim in any way? 
Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So, there's no motive. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. Yeah, he couldn't detect that knife coming into his chest. Jesus Christ, John! <laughs> That's one reason why he didn't do much work with the Chief pros Prospector. That's why he's gone from Detective Good Man to Detective Good Corpse. John! <laughs> <laughs> My sister called the victim out here on the day of the murder, right? Here, this parking lot? So it seems like calling an unarmed man to shoot out at high noon. Uh, I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective? You call me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. They shoot you for basically nothing in Florida. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago to tell you the truth. But you you are a cop. You're wearing a cop's uniform underneath that uh, poncho. Oh, really? Now he tells me. But you're patrolman now. Oh. So, how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's sad, though. Ted Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do... Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, huh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of this cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, he don't realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation? All right, compadre, count to three. I think this might be the thing with like, oh, this evidence doesn't do anything for them. Huh? You gotta do that if you're going to draw evidence on someone. That's what we do in Texas. Remember never to visit Texas. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to visit Texas. Okay, so, uh... Even though, oh. uh, funny enough, is that there have been more blues popping up in, in, in that in that state, so over the last couple years, so. What's that? Some sort of police passport? This is Detective Goodman's ID card. Strangely enough, we found it a good distance away from the crime scene. Good distance? In this rat hole? You want a distance? Get yourself to Texas. Uh no. Texas. This is a tiny little crime scene in a tiny little town with tiny little evidence. What difference does a few yards make, compadre? Yeah, um, it's it was behind a partition that separates this the door and the car, so that's a big difference. Notice, Chef, if you encounter suspicious evidence, think of Texas. Just over the way to Satan to hang around with the pros. And now it. Uh, let's see. You might just want to look up the guide. I am I am looking at the guide. What does it say to do then? Examine the area. Here, phone. Let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears. No, my ears. Maybe it's due to the barometric pressure. What is she babbling about? Hey, what did he just say? See, you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. Did 
this well is in our way. I'm gonna faucet for water. Wait, I know. This was made of a cave. Hiding the truth. Facade. This is no wall, but a water tank. I fail to see how it makes any difference either way. Look at door. This must mean something. I'm not sure the door is mean anything. No, it won't open. A mysterious slack. I fail to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, you need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? Oh, you know what I just realized without looking at the guide? We couldn't what? examine the uh, crime scene earlier because we weren't allowed. Now that we oh, are, yeah. the phone. Let's look at cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this along to the victim. How about deductive reasoning would deduce that? I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Check it out. Right, let's check it out. Oh, I'm not doing this. My boss told me that as a security guard, it's my job to watch the office. I'm on season six, but I'm not really sure what it's got to do with security. <laughs> hmm. This phone's still on the redial screen. Redial? Uh, Mr. Wright? Most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. Just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things like a redial. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, you never know with people from your generation. Whatever, oh, let's check this phone out. Oh! Oh! Ho! Now to see who the owner of this phone called last. No key, chef. A defense is on just anything first. <laughs> he, he just, just pushes, the, pushes button. the button. <laughs> it's the samurai theme. Hey, Shasson. I know that. Hey, what's going on over here? Ah! Oh, oh, sorry. I see you, partner. You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Who's phone is this anyway? It was kind of ground over there. Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It was my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing the call with someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those new fangled ring ring tunes. Oh, that? Oh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. What? Your phone? Yeah, it's uh, kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone and a wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. No shit, they oh would. God. They'll do it in oh. Florida as well. Uh-oh. I've incited the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. Last call made at 518 on the day of the murder. So there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but... 
There's a gold mine of evidence against her. Hmm? And the prospect of tomorrow is none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister fate is decided, Bamina. Bamina, my condolences. Aficionado. Yeah, Bambina? How can you say that? You're my sister. You are. Uh... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? Hmm. I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that, maybe it's that dry wind that's blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will, something's up there. Something's up to something there, but who? Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence and raiding testimonies, you mean? He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. And whooped his ass three times. Well, two. But rumors such as rumors, aren't they? These prosecutors were always talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you find one person. But they're, but they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Hate to say this, but it's your sister, Bambina Chief Prospector Lana Sky. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets, and some people load them with deals. Damn, that, I'm screen capping that one. Goddamn right. What, you're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? When there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was the closest to Edgeworth? My sister's cell phone. The last time it was used was 518, right after Goodman was killed. Maybe she was canceling her date for the night. No, Why because he... I'm sure he got the guy got stabbed at four o'clock, and if she was at four, she would have she would have made the call then. Why did Lana make that call? We also haven't checked the trunk yet. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look, shot was written on it. You're right. Let's see. 67S122. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, so, what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Hmm. No, Mr. <laughs> so. The detective we think goes to Ezra. Yeah, right. I'm sure Ezra <laughs> wouldn't know what this means either. So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we've got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So, you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana confessed to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not a criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma? Yes? I know that song that your phone plays in your rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show for kids. 
The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine. It was yours. At 518, ju just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I, she hung up right away. I see. Cell phone updated in the court record. A detective was murdered, and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. And that is what we're going to call today's episode. We are done the first day of investigation. So next time on the Super Bonus Round, we get to go to meet with our favorite judge again. So thank you guys again so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah. <laughs> I can hear him now. <laughs>